So there are three common ways that an API endpoint accepts parameters. First, in the query string after the question mark. Secondly, the JSON body passed in the body of the request. And thirdly, the path parameter embedded directly within the URL. Today, we're focusing on what happens if a server fails to validate the inputs within the query string of an API request. Specifically, we'll explore how server-side parameter pollution, SSPP for short, can impact APIs that rely on query string parameters. If you're unfamiliar with server-side parameter pollution, I recommend checking out my previous video in this series, but if you feel confident, let's dive right in. Server-side parameter pollution is a vulnerability that arises when an application does not properly handle duplicate parameters passed in a URL query string. Attackers can manipulate these parameters, often leading to unintended behavior by the server, such as bypassing access controls, modifying data, or even exploiting more critical vulnerabilities. Just to recap, this video is all about how servers handle query string parameters in a REST API, how it works, how it can be exploited, and how it can lead to server-side parameter pollution. So how do query string parameters work in an API? When a client makes a request to an API endpoint with a query string, the server processes it as follows. First, parsing the URL. The server reads the URL and identifies the query string, everything after the question mark, to figure out which parameters are being sent. Second, extracting parameters. The server pulls out the query string parameters and stores them for the server side code to use. And third, validation. Ideally, the server checks that the parameters meet specific criteria, such as data type, a length, and allowed values. But if this step isn't done correctly, it can lead to security issues. And fourth, handling the request. The server uses the parameters to execute its business logic, such as querying a database or processing user input, and then returns a response, often in JSON or XML format. Now that we know the basic flow, let's take a look at some examples to demonstrate how server-side parameter pollution can occur and how an attacker might exploit it within a URL query string. When you make a request to a web server, parameters are often sent through the URL in the query string. We see this all the time. An example URL might look like this. Shop website, buy, question mark, item shoes, discount 10%. In this case, you're telling the server you want to buy shoes and apply a 10% discount. Now, what happens if we add multiple parameters with the same name? In this case, we have buy item shoes and item hat at a discount. And here, two item parameters are passed. And this is where SSPP, server side parameter pollution, comes into play. The way the server processes multiple parameters can vary depending on how it's coded. You can attempt to inject a second parameter or learn more about the application and how it handles a server-side request by adding a URL encoded AND character to the query string. For example, you could modify the URL like this, adding a second parameter after the URL encoded AND sign, which is percent %26, and you've now passed a query for two items to be searched. And this would result in the following server-side request to the internal API. Get products, search item laptop and item computer. Analyzing the server's response for clues on how the additional parameter is processed. If the response remains unchanged, it could indicate that the parameter is successfully injected but ignored by the application. PHP parses the last parameter only. This would result in a search for a computer only. ASP combines both parameters. This would result in a search for laptop and computer. Node.js and Express are first parameter only. This would result in a search for laptop. Let's look at a quick reference chart for server-side parameter pollution and query strings. Here we have a single parameter, which we are already accustomed to. Here we have a duplicate parameter where we passed an inject character, the and sign, and a second parameter. Down here we have different values for same parameters. So we have item shoe and item hat potentially overriding one another. Then we have sensitive parameter bypassing, where we could potentially pass off override the user from guest to admin. And then below this, we just have first come first serve based on the backend code, which speaking of the backend code, let's take a look. Here we have in Express, 
a very simple script to show us how it's handled. And at the start, we have app get, and we get our request here and prepare our response. And we have our get query string parameter where we receive the request and we parse the query. This query is then processed by the backend business logic. It's run and it results in an item check in a database somewhere. Very simple. Let's look at a practical example now. Hey, welcome back everyone. Super excited to get into this video. This is going to be a lab provided by PortSwigger on exploiting server-side parameter pollution in a query string. Let's get into it. Jumping right into things, this is a lab on exploiting server-side parameter pollution in a query string. Super cool and exciting stuff. You have to know this if you're in cybersecurity. So we are not given login credentials for this challenge. We're required to understand how a URL query syntax um, can be used to change a server-side request, as well how to use error messages to build an understanding of how a server-side, so an internal API, processes internal input. Let's take a look at the lab. This is our lab here, and we're gonna head over to my account where of course we don't have credentials, so we have to do forgot password. And for here, we're just going to say administrator because of course we know we have to log into administrator, turn on intercept in Burp Suite, submit this request, and we're going to send this to repeater. What we will try here is parameter pollution. So we're going to try the and sign, and we're just going to try some, some random lettering, foo at equals foo. Now, sending this, okay, interesting. So it didn't crash the application, that's odd. Let's URL encode this because again, this is a form and the form, if we look at the page source or the, the JavaScript, it's gonna be URL encoding this. So let's URL encode our, our sign here and see if it crashes the application or not. But because this is, I believe Java in the back end, it actually processes the first variable first. So here it says parameter is not supported. So it's actually trying to use this parameter here. Interesting enough. Okay, well, we can't really go any here. So let's try one of the other characters. So another query syntax character could be of course the pound sign, we send this and field not specified. Okay, so now we're getting something. Now we know that there's some type of field. Well, okay, so we actually were able to pass a second parameter. This is a truncated request. The a username administrator was processed and then this was processed and returned as an invalid field name, which means it's the backend is processing this request. But I do wanna see what happens if we URL encode our query syntax characters. It says the same thing. Well, how do we find another parameter or a field? Let's take a look at any JavaScript that's on the page. We'll inspect the page, straight to sources, forgot password, .js. Let's open this in a new tab. And if we look through here, we see our DOM content, so our internal documentation that's been uh, implemented. We have, of course, our URL encoded form data. We then have variables for the forgot password function and message. And as we get down here, we have just styling, display errors, but down here we have forgot password ready function where we actually see a reset token. Huh. We also see a URL or a URI query. So, and it looks like this is a forgot your password query that's asking us for a token, a password reset token, and this goes in our browser. Well, how can we trigger the reset token? We can see here the syntax is reset underscore token. So what if we had a field named reset token? Now I know field down here is uppercase, but we always wanna pass parameters as lowercase. And we're going to change this field to, let's just change it to three A's just to see what happens. Field not specified, okay. Let's now try, so I think if it says not specified, we shouldn't it say invalid? If, let's try the and sign again. Here we go, okay, so now it's saying invalid field. So it's definitely processing. We've definitely polluted this parameter and it's bleeding over into this next parameter on the internal server side. 
Let's change this to reset underscore token. We'll send this off and we have a token. Okay, great. Let's apply this to our main request here. Jumping back over to the proxy request, we will paste it here and sending this off should work. Never know, we'll find out. There it is, we have our token. Let's copy this. Now remember what we saw, that URL? This URL, Corey, forgot password reset token. Let's try it out. Forgot password, question mark, reset underscore token equals our token. And let's see if it works. Intercept off, new password. Let's make it AAA, we'll submit that. We'll head over to my account and we'll try signing in as an administrator. Password AAA, we'll log in, admin panel, delete Carlos. There it is, we solved the lab. Like and subscribe so I can make more videos.